Welcome to the next Neuro Live. And today we're going to talk about the one thing you can do that will instantly help you improve your mental health, which is a fantastic thing to do. And then also help you with your neurocycle. So I'm going to talk to you about reading fiction, literary fiction and general fiction as a fantastic tool to help you instantly help fix your mental health, help manage your mental health in the moment. And it's wonderful. And I'm going to give you some demonstrations of how I use this myself in my neurocycle to make the process of reflecting and rechecking and the active reaches, especially the rechecking <clears throat> and also active reaches, actually, if I think of it in a fantastic way. So in at the uh, last week's Neuro Live, and if you haven't watched them, I recommend you guys go back and watch the previous ones because they don't build on each other, but they do build on each other. So you're going to get benefit from watching them on their own, but also it's great if you watch them together. I focused a lot on gathering awareness of the four signals last week and how to just read that in your body and how to be able to use that in the neurocycle. And when you, I want you to to remember that with the, the gathering awareness of the four signals and then use that to tune into how you're feeling. And then if you need some instant help, use this fiction that I'm going to talk about today. Okay, so my daughters and myself are obsessed with Sarah Mars and her series. She has so many different series, Throne of Glass. And we just got this. Look at the size of this book. I just love it. I get so excited. This is the House of um, Fame and Shadow, which is it's the Crescent City novel series. So my daughters, I have three daughters, and we're all reading these novels. And we have been for a few months because each series that Sarah Mars writes, and she's not the only author we, we read, but we're reading hers at the moment. She writes multiple books within each series, and each book is like 900 pages long. And we get this, and we get so excited, and we read through this, and we share, and communicate, and we talk about, we have these conversations like, who does that person think you of, and what, who's the person in the character, which character in the novel is the one that most represents this person, and what did you think of how they handled that situation? Can you believe this? And there's these texts going back and forth, and there's these discussions, and we go for walks, and Sometimes in the middle of business meetings, because my kids will work for us, we'll suddenly, ah, that's a Sarah, that's a whatever, some character comment in a book, in one of the books or something like that. And it's, so in other words, it's created a really, it's a great bonding to read fiction with a, a group of people, but it's also a great way of get, of developing empathy with others because you tune into the characters. And when you read a book, you tune into the characters, you involved in their lives and you psychologically get you know, start anticipating what they're going to do and what they're thinking and you close gaps and you visualizing these scenarios that people are creating for you for as with words and it's very powerful that when you read a piece of text and you visualize those scenarios that's activating so many different parts of your brain to work together in such a cohesive way so as you're not seeing it you you I think in your mind's eye, so you get tremendous activity in the occipital lobe, which is the back of the brain, that's working with the frontal lobe. In fact, you get massive bursts of what we call beta activity, which is a wave that shows that you're very focused and insight and developing insight. And um, you it, it activates this like flow across the brain that is very healing. Um, it also tends to activate the alpha wave, which is a very calming wave, which is a wave in the brain that when you get insightful, increases in activity. And, and when I talk about these brain waves, when I say things like alpha and gamma and beta, those are the names of the frequencies of brain waves. And brain waves are basically how your energy, how your, your brain is filled with energy. And it's basically a way to understand the energy of your brain because your brain is responding to the experiences that you're having. So all those brain waves operate at the time and go up and down according to the state that you're in. And when you get worked up about something and you feel like your mental health has been challenged and you feel like you're anxious or worked up or stressed out or someone's upset you or something, a very quick way of getting a very nice flow of balanced waves is to read fiction and to just take a few moments, even if it's 10, 15 minutes and you've heard me, if you listen to my podcast, I did a whole podcast in detail on this, which you can go listen to as well. And you hear that and I often talk about this, how I'll go and just read some fiction even if it's five minutes, I make sure that I end my day reading fiction. When I'm in the sauna, I'm reading fiction. And it, it gives me a way. I know on a, on a neuroscientific level, 
It's calming my brain down, getting a beautiful balance between my energy response in my brain to what I'm experiencing. So if I'm feeling like my heart's beating, physical, the physical warning signal, and I'm feeling frustrated and overwhelmed, emotional warning signal, and I'm feeling, and I can feel that my perspective is, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And my behavioral signals are maybe getting, you know, a bit on edgy in terms of how I'm speaking and what I'm, you know, kind of reacting to people. When I sense that kind of thing and I'm feeling like I'm losing my creativity or I just need to calm down, I'll honestly I'll go grab my book and I'll read it for even if it's only five minutes. And that is enough to activate a balance between the different um, energy responses. So what we want is we want insight to increase when we're in a mental health challenging moment. And we want that in, and we also want, we want a healing energy to flow so that we can calm down your physiology. Otherwise we're getting this feedback that I'm in a panic. And we want to also get um, a clarity in our minds. So that comes from a combination of increasing what we call low beta energy, increasing gamma energy, increasing alpha, increasing theta in a very balanced way. So the theta wave, if you think of the waves of the sea, where the waves are swirling, but it looks calm. And that's, so we often talk about this theta wave when it starts to move through the brain. It creates a calming energy through the brain and that sends us a calming sensation to the body. The alpha wave is like a bridge between the conscious and unconscious mind. So if you think of it in terms of the sea, it's just before coming out of the theta wave, just before the big waves build on the beach, you get alpha. And that alpha is a building wave and it's a connection wave. It's like a bridge and it helps you to get insight. So the reading is activating a flow of healing theta activating a bit of insight away the alpha wave which is going to help you to calm down to a point where you're getting insight and it's going to then help you get very focused it's going to stimulate low beta wave where you can actually start getting focused and so that combination is very powerful in getting you out of a mental health jam and it's very very quick to do that as well so that's one thing that's just amazing. You can be in that state and you do that and it's just, it's incredible how it actually just, how you respond. Then the other thing that it's fantastic for is in terms of, I've mentioned already in terms of developing empathy. What they've, what research, some research, sorry, some research from the New York school, um, in New York City has shown that when you read fiction, general fiction, you're going to get the excitement of the characters and ups and downs that they're going through is very, it creates a lot of fun and anticipation in you. When you read literary fiction, which is, which is more formal fiction, that creates, a, where it's not so obvious about the, what, what the character's going to, it's not as predictable. You've got to really work out things. That also increases your capacity for empathy and improves socialization. So he has another tool. If you are battling with, if you battle a bit with social anxiety, Reading literary fiction can actually help you get, in, and also even in general fiction can help you get into a healthy state or a calmer state that you can deal better with going into a social situation. So there's another example. And then the other way that I love to use fiction is that, uh, and I'm going to give you a general list in a moment of all the different things that it does, sort of summary, but I love to use it to find rechecks for myself, which I mentioned at the beginning. So as I'm reading something, I always have my phone. I tend to read on Kindle. So I've got my notes section of my phone and I have a little heading rechecks. To reach as I've taken five steps. And I've put them and I've got these little headings on my notes section of my phone. And as I'm reading, if there's something that a character says or a situation and it just makes me think, wow, that's just something amazing that maybe I could use or maybe I could guide someone to use. And then I'll actually just copy and paste that in the note. So as I'm reading, even when it's the five minute or 10 minute relaxation read, or if it's when I'm lying in the bath at night, one down the day reading, if it's, if I'm reading in bed or if I'm reading in the sauna, whenever I find something that stands out and could potentially be something like a recheck or an active reach, I copy and paste it in. And, and I'm just going to go through five of yours. And these are from the Sarah Mars series, Throne of Glass. And it's, it's a whole, you need to read the books to see that it's, there's the whole lot of different characters going through different things, which is what stories are. And just the, so here's some of the, before I go through some of the ones that I've selected, when you're reading that process of focusing on those words, 
building that story in your mind and seeing those people and seeing the connections and seeing the relationships and anticipating the what can happen next. And that is, you'll feel your heart beating and it's, it's excellent to calm your mental health. It's very distracting. Now, I had a situation just this morning. Um, I had to get ready for another meeting, not this new life, another meeting. And this, and it was, it's a huge project we're working on. And it was just, I was completely felt overwhelmed by the size of the project and the way I was approaching it. And then as I was doing this, I felt myself getting like, okay, I'm losing it. I'm losing my creativity. I'm not going to do well. And I took the five minutes to calm down my mental health. And honestly, within five minutes, my mental health was back on track. So I got the theta wave going. I got the theta wave going. I got the gamma wave going. The so theta, alpha, and the beta, sorry, and a little bit of gamma. So it's, and the gamma wave is a wave that helps you to actually start thinking of creative ideas, like the learning when you get into that stage where you can actually solve a problem and you're starting to think of new ideas, then you'll see gamma activity. But it got me in that state. Now I could go back and work and pay for that meeting and, and so on. Okay, so here's some here's just some examples. I'm just gonna go through a few. This is and I'm I put this under this particular phrase under the recheck section. And I made a note that this is an example of when we suppress things, how it can affect mental and physical healing. So this particular character has had a really bad accident and has lost the use of their legs from their waist down and they're going through a process of healing and the person that they're working with is in trying to get them to deal with their stuff. Like I tell you all the time, you've got to deal with your stuff. So that's why I just really like this. And so here's the character and it's just a little phrase. There are choices in my past, he said tightly, that I have come to regret but I can only move on and attempt to fix them. Fight to make sure that they do not occur again. And then the person that is working with this, this character on his healing says that facing the emotional consequences of your injury will be a part of this process. And then the person responds, says, I don't need to face anything. I know what happened before, during, and after. And that's what I want to focus on here. That really got me because... So often I heard my patients say things like, yeah, I got this. I I know what happened. I can tell you what happened. And so many times people have sent me emails and direct messages and that kind of thing. And where they've actually said, I, I know what happened. I know why I'm like this. So I don't want to talk, face it anymore. I just want to get to it. But unfortunately, you have to deal with, you have to learn how to sit with that and how to process what happened. So very often, in when you're going into the neurocycle process, you you're going in with this way that you're functioning as your main thought, your main story, and, and you you know the story. You can actually tell the story, but you've never really given yourself a chance to process it, to maybe forgive yourself, forgive other people, to sit with that pain. Every time it's come up, you've pushed it down, and you've heard me say before that if you don't, so if you don't break it down, it gets stronger and stronger. So the neurocycle is bringing it up. It's very sore. It's very painful, I know. And that's why you do tiny little bits every day. That's why even if you can even do, if it's really painful, just go through the five steps in a minute, in three minutes, in five minutes max, so you're not spending too long. But each day that you're doing that neurocycle, you're facing that thing, you're breaking it down, you are deconstructing it. And when you do that, you are getting power over it. You're getting, you are getting um, the power, you're getting more control as opposed to less control. You are controlling it versus it controlling you. You can't keep pushing it down. You can't keep suppressing because that, as we know from what you learned from me, and maybe you don't know, is it's going somewhere. That toxic energy from that experience, if it's not deconstructed, is going to affect the immune system of your brain, the immune system of your body, and increase your vulnerability of your body to, to physical and mental healing over time, um, challenges over time. And if you are trying to heal, not facing your stuff and processing your stuff can slow down your healing. And that's why this appealed to me so much, that we've got choices that we've made in the past. And sometimes we've never forgiven ourselves for those choices because those choices had consequence. Every choice that we've made has had a consequence. And I, and maybe it's a, and this person says, these are choices I've made that I've come to regret. But instead of processing through that regret, that choice was that choice. It had this consequence. I really regret. What could I, can I have to forgive myself? I take ownership of that. I take responsibility, but I can move on. It was a mistake. That conversation, this particular character in this book wasn't having. It was, oh, that was a bad choice. I regret it. Suppression. And that, that's not good. You've got to face the emotional consequences of your injury. Part of that process. And 
until we, and so many times when I, this is what this caught me, when this person said, I don't need to face anything. I know what happened before, during and after. So many of my patients used to say that. I've said that. I don't need to face this. I know what happened. But then I realized, yes, you do know what happened. You can explain the root of the tree. You've got the whole tree there. But that tree is still in its very strong toxic state. It has to be deconstructed and reconstructed to weaken it and to grow that healthy branch where you get to, okay, this happened. This mistake happened. This, these are the regrets I had. These are the consequences. But this is how I am moving forward.